now we're officially recording. So the only thing we mentioned was a little bit of talk about the mission statement, uh, but there's a slide for that. All right. Uh, so next with introductions, we'll go to Clinton Patterson. I don't think anybody knows him. I think he definitely needs to tell us who he is. Uh, yes, I'm Clint Patterson, um, DNN super fan. I went to the Will Stroll School of Evangelism. And, uh, <laughs> Will who? You know. <laughs> That's right. The real Will. So, um, but no, so yes. I, I work for DNN Corp, ecosystem manager. Um, I think my heart is probably in the awareness group, right? Because, you know, that's just, I'm extroverted, outgoing, whatever. So I'm helping with uh, Twitter, blogging videos, uh, everything this group is going to do, I hope to be able to uh, to help out with. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Clint. Uh, next one is Lucas. Hello, I'm Lucas, and... Uh... I've been working with DNN since, I think, 2003 or 2004. I'm not quite certain. Um, and for the past year, I'm working uh, for Tracy, building awesome DNN sites. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I think Lucas has, like, this, like, little sexy voice thing going on. Like, if we do any videos that need voiceover, I think we need to get him to do it. <laughs> I'll actually I be seeing quite a few of those probably pretty soon. <laughs> oh, nice. I can nice. follow some Nick. In the video, a bit of a neck, you know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for participating, Lucas. We appreciate it. Uh, next is Jess, the Finn Coburn. Morning, fellas. I'm Jess Coburn. I own Applied Innovations. We're a managed hosting company. DNN has a special place in our heart. I'm really excited to see the the new direction it's going. So, I'm looking forward to contributing and helping see it grow. As are we all. Thank you, Mr. Jess. All right. And last but not least, uh, Francisco. Hello. Oh, okay. we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm Francisco Perez from Madrid in Spain, and I'm very, I've been working with uh, DNN since two, 200, 2006, I think, since version four. And I'm just trying to. Um, bring more awareness to DNN in Spain and the rest of Spanish spoken countries, which I Excellent. think is uh, something we should do. Yeah, I agree. I, I, um, I, I think we we have a lot of work to do everywhere, but uh, Europe and US, uh, I think, is going to be our, our main areas of uh, you know focus. Uh, everything will grow from there. OK, so that brings us to me. Actually, I was at the top level, um, but whatever. Um, I, I, I'm sure you guys can't see the bubbles. I'm sorry? Is Don Bishop on the call? Oh, he is there. Oh, look at that. He popped up. Okay, I didn't see that. There was like a little scroll thing. Yeah, Don Bishop. With that. Go ahead, Mr. Don Bishop. I was trying to hide. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Don Bishop, Spiffy Web Team. Uh, we do a fair amount of support work helping people get, and get uh, .NET Nuke to do what they need it to do. Excellent, and and you and you have uh, some expertise in marketing as well. I think we all know from your your spiffy uh, uh, what do you call it ignite sessions and whatnot. Right. Yes, we do a fair amount of automated marketing and that sort of thing. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Now I, I'm not missing anybody, am I? Did, did anybody <laughs> not get to talk? I think I got everybody now. Okay. Uh, so I'm Will Stroll. I've uh, been around using DNN since it basically was released. Um, I run, uh, at this point, I run Upendo Ventures. Um, so, you know, we're yet another DNN agency. Um, and, you know, my passion has always been around DNN. And and I've done a lot over the years to, you know, try to help it grow. Um, and so it's an honor to have, uh, be offered the, the role that I am with uh, uh, helping lead this group and, and, you know, champion the efforts of, uh, of the mission that we have ahead of us. So I look forward to working together with all of you to, you know, help grow DNN because, uh, you know, it's, uh, DNN was always founded on the abundance principle uh, to where, you know, the bigger we make this pie that is DNN, the more opportunities all of us have. Um, and, and that's how we got so big, at, you know, in our heyday is, is taking that, that approach. And, and so I, I really feel that if we continue to follow that, uh, that kind of, you know, uh, you know, goal. Uh, I, I really think that we can have that impact that we're all looking for. <clears throat> all right. So we already went through the. 
I'm sorry. Go ahead. I said, bam. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So agenda. Uh, so we already went through the agenda. Uh, we already went through my expectations. You know, this isn't your job, but we do, you know, if you can do at least two things a month, whatever, however big or small those things are, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, and one of those things uh, at least needs to, needs to be this meeting. Uh, and the snow, snowball effect, getting uh, everybody else on board. Uh, so we talked about the mission statement. We had some feedback on that. Um, so I think one of our goals for the next meeting is um, uh, finalize this with everyone's ideas in the next meeting. So we're going to have that as a uh, action item. All right. So next meeting, we finalize our mission statement. And 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 when we get to the communication section, this is something that we could you know chat about over the course of the next month. All right. Meeting logistics. So uh, one of the first question is how often should we meet? And I suggest uh, you know, uh, at least uh, once a month, but I, I don't think we need anything more than once a month as long as we're staying in constant contact. What are your thoughts? Once a month for status is good, <clears throat> individual meetings as we need. I agree. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. Is there, is there any um, uh, adverse feedback to that? Does anybody feel like once a month isn't enough or it's too much? All right, sounds good. I think it's a good. I think that's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Um, so I, I purposefully, uh, when we scheduled this meeting, I purposefully uh, chose the morning time because I know we have some uh, folks that are uh, in time zones that uh, happen earlier than than where I live. Um, so does does this morning time? Well, morning time, my time. Does that work for everybody, or should we be earlier? Uh, any feedback on time of day? For me, it's okay. From Spain. Anybody else? Yeah, I think it's a good time because maybe if people on the West Coast too, it, it works for them too, somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. Oh, so 8:30 ish a.m. for me. So that'd be like that'd be 11:30 East Coast. All right. I tried not to do nine because you know I know how people love their lunch breaks. All right. Uh, all right. Cool. Uh, does a specific day week work better or worse for everybody? Like, should we do Wednesdays, Thursdays, Tuesdays? Probably not Mondays or Fridays. <clears throat> right. Thursday's a good day. Anybody else have a better day, or does that sound good? Works for me. Um. So the meeting format, I think that's something that we might end up doing uh, organically over time. Um, but you know, basically, I, in moving forward, what I'd like to do is have a constant meeting format so that we always know, like, when we come here, this is what it is, and we don't have these, like, you know, I'm a stickler for meetings. People coming to a meeting unprepared and like, oh, we just talked about nothing, and that was a waste of time, and, and that that's something I really want to avoid. So I. I uh, but if you have a specific meeting format in mind at any given point in time, you know this is this is a collaborative group. You know, I don't expect for uh, this to be you know kind of like the benevolent uh, uh, dictator type model. I, I, I feel like we you know we all have uh, equal footing here. So at any given point in time, like if there's a specific meeting format uh, that you know, or suggestion that you want, um, uh, let me know. But uh, over time. But the, my, my goal and, and the reason I wanted to put that out there is to make sure that during these meetings, I'm not wasting people's time. And, and, and when you leave the meeting, you have gotten something out of it um, and, and you'll come back to the next one. <laughs> any any uh, comments or feedback on that one? <clears throat> Sounds good. All right. Moving right along. Uh, areas of coverage. So this is a slide that we might be on for a few minutes. So I, I put some things up here as uh, kind of, you know, feeder items. Um, so, you know, of course, there's documentation. Um, we're, that's going to be a mission that's never accomplished. That's going to be something that's ongoing. Uh, documentation, even documentation that's already written is never done. Um, you know, there's going to be a need for blogs and, and not just on DNN software. And, you know, there needs to be blogs all over the place, even if we can get folks to blog on, on third party media sites, like if we can find a way to get in Fire paying for principal, uh, just something to be able to do now. You have to pay for that. Um, 
uh, you know, uh, you know, getting blogs out there and, you know, on your own sites, on, on other people's sites, uh, getting people to link to the various blogs, uh, you know, getting the, the blogs out there via terms such as social media. So that's the next one. Uh, you know, keeping our ears to ground on social media, responding to people, uh, participating. And, and one of my favorite examples of that just happened, I think, yesterday. Was it yesterday, Clint? Um, it depends on what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, the the troll. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was yesterday, and uh, we actually had a pretty neat exchange and participation this morning. Um, but I won't I won't derail <laughs> what you're about to say. Go ahead, tell them about. Oh yeah, I haven't I haven't seen anything this morning. Well, well so this is something that uh, Clint and I have done a lot over the years. Um, and every now and then we're able to rope some other people in it. And and now like you know Poindexter, David David Poindexter, he. Um, he participates in this as well. So like whenever we see like a troll, for example, a lot of times these trolls, they're like, oh, my God, DNN is the worst thing since sliced bread. Blah, blah, it's, it's awful. Don't ever touch it. You know, you'll, your head will explode. Whatever their their comments are, um, like 9.9 .9 times out of 10, they're unfounded. They just ran into a, a problem and they just have grief and they just they just vent out there. And then, uh, you know, as a group, we end up reaching out to them, and then they realize, oh wow, there's a lot of people paying attention. Uh, maybe I should be good. And this is the problem. Oh, thanks for helping me fix it. Hey, you guys are cool. Love it. Um, so that's usually the the thing that happens. Um, every now and then, the, the trolls are just trolls, and that was the one from the other day. Um, <laughs> but uh, but that's one of the things that I think as a group um, we have a lot of power in. Um, so uh, that's one of the things I think as that comes up, um, and it's going to come up more and more as we get more activity. Uh, I, I think as you know, it's kind of this thing where you know you, you see something get bullied and you're like, oh, wait a minute, there's a whole line of people standing up, standing between me and that. Uh, you know, I'm gonna just be quiet now. And and it's not to silence them, it's just let them know they have help, right? And and that you don't need to say that. Maybe you just ask, right? Um, and so so that's one of the goals that I have with social media specifically. Uh, we definitely need more videos out there, um, but we have a few people that already do um, some great videos. Um, so I'm not like looking for everybody to do videos, but we do video content is much easier consumed than anything else. Uh, so, and the more videos there are out there from various people, the the better. Uh, and you know, people love to listen to something for three minutes versus read for ten. Uh, live streams, like we, I don't think we can have enough of those. Uh, I, I personally uh, have plans to bring one back uh, as well. Um, I, I don't know if it's going to be DNN Hangout or called DNN Hangout, but I, I plan to do something like that in the future myself. But uh, again, the more the merrier. Uh, code examples, that's something that we used to have a lot of. Uh, you know, think that it, for those of you who have been around long enough, you know, think back to the days of when we had uh, uh, core modules. Um, every time something new or interesting came out, uh, oh, we lost uh, Tracy, he had to go. Um, <clears throat> but uh, the, what is that? DNN is on your side? Okay. Um, <laughs> DNN gotcha. is on your side? You said we needed Peyton Manning and, uh, and Brad Payton yeah. to rock the angle for DNN. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and uh, Meatball Sandwich. Um, so those, those are commercials in the U.S. for those of you that aren't in the U.S. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so the code examples going back to the core modules. Uh, every time a new tech came out, uh, there was a, a code example in there that was literally built into a module that was like, oh, okay, now I can see how to do this. And 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 while there wasn't necessarily straight uh, straightforward documentation on it all the time, which you know that is often did come in the form of a blog, um, there was at least a code example. Um, so you know, code examples are going to be awesome. Um, and and that's I, I don't consider that to be the mission of the developer advisory group. I, I think that's our mission. Um, and then DNSsoftware.com participating there, making sure we're in, you know, keeping our, our, our eyes on the answers and forms, and, and as, as we're able to, whether it's blogs or otherwise, provide content, uh, especially with like things like the timeline and whatnot. Uh, with the answers and forms, though, those sections, you may not always have the answer, but you may know that like somebody in the group has the answer. So you know, it's, it's also good to say, you know what, hey, somebody here, somebody come answer this one because you know, they, they need to be responded to, especially if it's somebody new to the community. The faster they get an answer, the more they're going to uh, adopt DNN, the more they're going to be passionate about it, the more they're going to tell other people about it, and the more we can grow this big pie. Um, and that's a great segue into the last one, grow participation. So anything that we can do to encourage other people to do the things that we're charged with doing. Um, and so that, you know, maybe that's recruiting them into this group. Maybe it's not. Uh, maybe it's just getting them, getting them onboarded with, you know, hey, did you know you can blog on the site? 
hey, let's get you on there. We'll get you in touch with Clint or whatever. Um, whatever it is we can do to encourage them to, to help with these things, um, the less that we have as a group have to do. So uh, that's, uh, those are the areas covered. Am I missing anything? There's no way I got everything. Uh, Joe, Joe had mentioned uh, just awareness in the CMS media in general um, earlier in the chat there, so that's a good one as well. Just in the broader CMS world. Uh, I'll repeat what I said earlier. Uh, it has to do with the videos. Uh, when we see the videos, we usually think of tutorials, and I think what we really need is some commercials. That goes with the why DNN versus the how do we do a particular function or how do we do a particular thing in DNN. That's one of the areas that I'm, it's near and dear to my heart, so I like to see something like that and uh, certainly help out there. For uh, That's what I'd like to do. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I also like there's how to's, there's commercials. I'd personally like to also see things like, um, uh, you know, this is how I got over a specific challenge or or maybe even extension uh, reviews. Um, you know, uh, I mean, we obviously don't want to, you know, push out extension reviews that are like awful, right? But like find something awesome or we find like some some little nugget of wisdom that like, oh my God, here's this cool thing that I found and, you know, I got a two minute video that you know, solves everybody's problems. Uh, you know, I like those, um, you know, uh, any other, like, and, and by the way, these don't have to be limited to the videos. Um, this, these, you know, kind of areas of focus could be across all of these areas, right? Like, they could be also in blogs, complementary blogs to one of these videos, those types of things. Any other feedback about the areas of coverage? Well, I will have to agree with Francisco. There are not enough examples of, you know, uh, really great DNN sites out there that you can find in the dnnsoftware.com easily. Uh, so I'll chime in here on that. Um, this is Clint. Uh, the dnnsoftware.com website has a community showcase. Yes, it is outdated, uh, but I am uh, working uh, with our sales engineer to have that updated. I've already got oh. the blog written <clears throat> when we release it. We're just working on some uh, – last minute details on the visualizer and then we have to, to populate all the content and to give you some background insight on that um, the community showcase I think uh, Joe Brinkman built it with the first iteration of liquid content and uh, so the way it was managed and maintained and actually implemented was very it just wasn't easy to manage and so we're, we're, we're um, updating that so that it is you just toggle a switch whether something is uh, visible or not uh, and then it, it should be there. So we, you know, I've gotten a lot of feedback. People, you know, really wanting to display or show off what DNN can do. And uh, so we, we should be, you know, having that page updated. I would say within, you know, the next few weeks, uh, if not sooner. Uh, and then what will happen is when people submit a site, um, you know, we'll just verify that it's DNN and um, you know approve it and. And make and what we'll do a screenshot and things like that. So uh, hopefully that'll be a little bit better in the future. Uh, so Clint, a little feedback on oh Jeremy, Jeremy from Security is uh, joining us. Um, yeah, he's, he's, I've been talking with him about it a lot too. Mm. Yeah. So um, let me put him in the attendee list. Jeremy, are you on audio yet? Yeah, I am now. Sorry about being late. So. Oh, no worries. So in the very beginning, we did an intro, uh, just like a real quick couple sentences and who we are. are. Uh, and so why don't you do that real quick for the group since not everybody knows each other. Okay. Oh, you want me to do that now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, because the rest of us already did it. <laughs> yep. All right. So I'm Jeremy Ferentz. I'm the owner at a company called Security Solutions. Uh, personally, I've been doing DNN stuff since 2005. Uh, this company's existed since uh, 2006 or seven, depending on how you look at things. We're, I think we're past 100 projects on DNN across the last 
nine years or so. So we've been pretty involved, and uh, I'm glad to see things uh, regrouping where DNN's concerned. I like the uh, excitement that's going on right now with um, looking like things are rebooting and new stuff happening. So, but anyhow, we're heavily involved in uh, designing sites, development of applications. We do quite a bit of internet stuff, and we've uh, never actually built anything but a few custom modules for DNN, but uh, done a lot of development work under the hood and some e-commerce stuff that was fun. So. I don't know. Is that a good quick overview? Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thanks, Jeremy. All right. Um, so some of the stuff that you missed, uh, there's a recording, um, and then we're going to provide the slide deck later as well. So Let's go back uh, to it. Thank, thank you for coming. All right. Awesome. So, uh, Clint, to piggyback upon what you just uh, were saying, uh, uh, one of the things that you might consider uh, looking into is contacting Sean, Sean Walker, uh, because uh, he built a showcase module on the um, hotcake site Hot. that automatically ver verifies the sites, and over time it'll verify sites. So if a site gets switched over, it'll just automatically remove it from the showcase. So the more that we can automate, I think the better. Yeah, no, I agree, and it'll actually email the person who submitted it when their site stops showing DNN. It'll be like, hey, your site got dropped. Um, and so I, I definitely agree with you. Um, <laughs> That is a custom module, and so you know I think it may take a little bit longer uh, to get implemented and populated and things like that. So for right now, we're just going to use the liquid content that we've got, and then you know hopefully in the future we're able to implement something similar to what he's got. Yeah, yeah. So that brings up a point for me. Um, uh, I think we all probably know who Scott Hanselman is, and one of the things that uh, when I used to listen to his podcast regularly, one of the things he would constantly say when he's interviewing people is like, you know, if you do something more than once, automate it. And so if, if for, for a lot of our tasks that we find ourselves doing, uh, I think we should also look to ways where we can work together with each other to automate many of these things so we, we do less work as much as possible. Uh, so just throwing that out there. Uh, is, are there any other areas of coverage that we need to uh, throw in there? Yeah, hey, this, uh, is, this is Don Bishop. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just have... I kind of want to put together the two ideas of the, the DNN showcase and the videos, because I think one of the places where where we make where it's really hard to explain to people the cool stuff that's happening behind the scenes on most of these sites, um, and, and that's where you know maybe a video of actually how an admin works if, when you're putting data in or or what you know. Because really, you know, it, it's hard to compete with a pretty home page and nobody really cares anymore. But one of the big strengths that DNN has is, you know, we can build stuff that actually does really cool things. Um, but many times it's hard to explain that. And I think videos are, are a great way to do some of that. And we need to, we need to think about some of that. I think that's our audience. So that's a big part of our audience. That sounds fantastic because there's all kinds of great sites out there, but there's nobody saying this is how I did it. And and so like if there's if somebody's putting together videos that specifically focuses on that, maybe even interviewing some of the people that put together some of the showcase sites or something like that, I think that could be a fantastic video series. Am I muted? No, I'm not. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> are there any any other areas of coverage that we should uh, throw out there? Um, I don't know if I'm up, out of scope with what I'm going to say, but what about the multilingual part of DNN? I mean, when you go into the DNN website, you don't see uh, that it supports multi. It has a multilingual functionality, not even in the CMS features, in the CMS mm -hmm. compare products. Mm -hmm. there, there is nowhere to be seen except in the language packs, of course. But I, I think that a user, a visitor, won't go straight to the language packs. We'll go first to the CMS features. Yeah, you're not out of scope with that. And in fact, uh, traditionally, DNN hasn't done a great job of that since like 2009, uh, you know, except for when the language packs were adopted by DNN Corp. Um, but, but I think that would be a detail that could fit under any one of these. But it's good to keep, um, make sure that things like this are brought to the forefront because there are a lot of areas that are important in DNN that, that don't get enough attention. And so it's, it's good to bring it up. Yeah, and you know, speaking uh, from the Greek side, you know, because I'm I'm a resident of Greece, 
many people are not adopting the, uh, the, the DNN CMS because they don't know whether it supports Greek or not. When mm -hmm. they do it there, so that's an issue, really. I agree. Any any other areas of coverage that we should bring up? Mm. Going once, going twice. Sounds good. We can always add on to that later. All right. Measuring success. Um, so this is something that I think is cru crucial or critical to to uh, us having an impact. And and, and and but quite frankly, if we don't feel like we're having impact, there's going to be people that just don't show up to the next meeting. And then the next thing you know, they're not responding to text messages or chat messages or whatever it is. Um, and, and so I think it's important for us all to hold each other to a standard of saying, you know, this is how we're going to measure ourselves over time. So uh, so so we answer these questions. How how do you? feel as a group, how, how do we feel as a group on, on how we're going to best measure ourselves? Well, that's, I mean, you could, uh, this is Clint, you could like quantify the number of content items, right? So it could be, you know, like, I don't know, how many tweets, how many videos, how many forum responses. Um, you know, things like that. Um, and it may be hard to count tweets, but um, any type of these video series or things like that, um, you know, any, anything you can measure, obviously. So uh, is DNA Corp already doing that in any way? Um, I mean, other than like the built-in uh, community stuff, uh, I'm not aware of anything that's you know, being tracked. I can ask Dennis if he's got some kind of social monitoring software that I'm unaware of. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I mean, nothing that I'm, I don't see it. I mean, not, yeah. not anything more, but you log in and look at your profile and see what you've done, like in your activity stream. Mm -hmm. um, no, I'm <clears throat> yeah, so in, in any way, shape, or form, if we can find a way to automate that kind of reporting, um, that'd be great. Like, like, what if we had, you know, an awareness group, you know, portal or page or something on the site that we had a dashboard that, you know, maybe we even had to build it a little bit, um, and we can constantly see that we don't have to necessarily like, you know, what my name's Don Bishop and I created a blog and now I have to go do something to tell the group so that way we can measure it. You know, that's just one more step that I, I, if we can, I'd like to try to avoid. Um, but but we do need to measure these things, and so we we, we can't avoid measurement, unfortunately. Yeah, and that ties back into some of the stuff Sean's got on uh, implemented on hotcakes. Will you probably you know played a part in that? Um, yeah, you know, <clears throat> would be helpful. You know, maybe we can have like a, a UI to surface that to uh, to the group. Well, with all of these things, we should have some kind of a call to action, and we should decide what that call to action is or, or specifically where they go. Um, a landing page on the dnnsoftware.com site uh, or something like that so that we can measure the success of a particular campaign or a particular blog or a particular video. Yeah, I, I was going to offer that finding ways to not measure what we've done, but whether our messaging is getting across, uh, what kind of impact we're having. Uh, if we're having an impact, you know, even within the community is what we're doing being noticed by people in our community. And then we're worried about the outside community. Yeah, so I think these are great ideas. I think the first action item for this is to see if Sean can get approval to open source or otherwise make available uh, some of the tooling that's been built for hotcakes. Um, that's going to take time, uh, so that's something we're going to have to do. But I'm going to move us on from this because uh, we have a couple more important things and we're running a little low on time. Um, so there's two other items on here, experiments and deliverables. Uh, I think we're going to get onto those in a, in a future meeting. Uh, but we do need to move on so that way we know how to talk to each other before, between now and the next meeting. So <clears throat> the next thing is uh, how are we going to communicate over time? Um, so the first thing is, you know, there's going to be regular ongoing chatting. And, and I think we all, like, in our own little buckets of people, 
we're we're talking to each other, but but as a group, we nef definitely need something to talk to all of each other at the same time on. Um, and so, you know, a couple of the most obvious things that we could use are Skype and Slack. But I did want to, and and, and uh, this is uh, something that Tracy uh, brought up earlier in the meeting too. He also suggested a Facebook group. Um, are, do, does anybody have any preferences on how we communicate with each other in, as a group? Not really. I I guess no, one bit. I've not I've I've not found Slack to be that that useful, and maybe that's because where I've been using it is a group that doesn't use it very much. But oh, um, yeah. yeah, and. Uh, yeah, I think you know, Facebook uh, might be better. One of the benefits of using a Facebook group is that it could be public and more visible. Um, I do know the the developers group and the partners advisory group are Slack, uh, at least initially, anyways. Not so that, that um, have to do that. This is but. Jeremy. This is Jeremy. Just a quick note. Uh, I'm in a local referral group, and one of the things that we did just a few months ago that changed everything for us on Facebook is we split and did a closed group for the internal conversations on Facebook and an open public group. And it might sound like it's a little tedious or adds extra work, but it worked out really beneficial because now it's very easy to make decisions. You can clearly see which group you're in at the moment. So you know whether you're sharing, talking to the public and trying to get attention versus just communicating internally with the people in your group about stuff that's going on. And it's been really helpful. I just wanted to mention that since someone brought up Facebook. Yeah, so personally for me, uh, I, I have two reasons why I'm not a fan of using Facebook. Um, but one of the biggest benefits of using Facebook is, is its ability to uh, notify uh, notify you. It's, it's probably the best at that. Um, but as far as Facebook groups, one of the things I, I don't like about it is um, there's you can't do anything collaborative on it. You can only collaborate via like images and text basically. And then whenever you do make decisions or you know whatever happens, none of that information is very easily discovered after the fact. Um, it's it's incredibly difficult to say, you know what, I don't know who said that or what the link was or you know why we decided that. You can't go back to it very easily. Um, so those are a couple of reasons I don't personally like Facebook, but if we have a consensus on using that, I'm fine with using it. David agrees via message. <laughs> Are there any other preferences <clears throat> on how we communicate? Um, so I got a question. Since the developers and uh, I guess partner groups are, are using Slack, is there any advantages? Like if we were to use Slack, would it make it, I don't know, where we could share things into their channel or they could see stuff in ours? I'm just wondering if there are any benefits for all groups being on the same technology. Um, well, that's that's part of the reason I'm personally leaning towards Slack because if it is used um, properly and people are communicating on it, it does have great uh, notifications and it has a lot of collaborative tools that are already built in and tons of plugins that allows it to integrate with lots of other things. Uh, and then you know there's you know you can have attachments and you know we can have you know different subgroups to where you know maybe we have a, a part of our Slack channel that's only for video, you know, another one that's only for documentation, and, and we can all still participate in all of them, but it allows us to focus conversations in, in various areas. Um, so I'm personally a fan of, of Slack for those reasons. It makes it a lot easier to collaborate and, and, and keep things in context. Um, and, and, and I believe you can make it public in terms of visibility. Um, so it doesn't mean that we have to, uh, you know, I'm not looking for us to necessarily put anything behind closed doors. I mean, there might be conversations that absolutely have to be behind closed doors, but I think those are going to be the exception and not the rule. At least I hope so. I, I, you know, I, I want this to be a transparent group as much as possible. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just thinking about a scenario in the future where, like, the development group says, hey, we are, you know, un unveiling a new module development technique, and this is what it's going to be. Hey, awareness group, can y'all see what we're doing? And you know, can you create some blogs or videos around this 
Um, I'm just wondering if there's any synergy uh, there. Yeah. Uh, there might be. There might be. Um, it, it would it would have to be some deliberate architecture of how we create the Slack channels because I think one way to do it is have all the groups in, in the same kind of Slack group and then have channels for uh, each area of focus. Um, but I, I, I think in the earliest steps, stages of this, um, I think that might be overkill because we might end up with too much activity and, and then it's kind of hard to keep up with you know what's going on. I, I think at least in the beginning stages, each group should have their own uh, Slack group. And then if we find that we need to put them together or maybe there's like another one where we are all together, uh, I think that might be the best option, at least in the beginning, so that we don't overwhelm anybody. <clears throat> So I, th I think the I think I mean there's not exactly a consensus here, but I think the best idea right now is to maybe start with Slack, and if it doesn't work out, we can always change it. Does anybody have any anybody disagree with that? I definitely agree. Anywhere we start, it's important that we start. Boom! I, I like that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, next thing is task tracking. So we're going to end up coming to things that we have to track, and that's something we could do with Slack. Um, so we there's uh, but I don't know if we want to. So is there any preference on that? <clears throat> like Trello is a great thing for that. You can set uh, due dates and assignments like you know, Will is assigned to do this particular thing and David's assigned to do this particular thing or maybe multiple people are. So Trello is a good, good and it works as a, uh, if, if anybody hasn't used Trello, it's basically like a Kanban board type thing where you can track various Various items and tasks that are that are uh, that you need to right, and then you can also collaborate in there as well, and it does integrate with Slack as well. Um, my experience, this is Jeremy again, is in Asana. Anyone else uh, tried that? I have not used Trello, so I can't say plus or minus on that one. But uh, Asana for that type of thing is phenomenal and free up to 15 people in a group. So the only drawback to that is that we're almost at 15 already, and then we'd have to prevent I people. That. From, yeah, we'd have to prevent people from being in the group, <laughs> which I'm not a fan of that. <laughs> right. uh, any other suggestions? David's required. Okay, that's paid. Paint teamwork is paid. All right, so it sounds like we could, we should we could start with Trello. Uh, maybe start with Trello. Look into built in. Oops, built. Slack first. Again, I want to try to prevent any overlap in work. All right, so let me get this bad boy. Come over here. Get rid of these. I did it. Uh, all right. File sharing. Uh, that's something that could be, we could, uh, Slack can do this too. So maybe we start with uh, Slack. Um, but there's going to be times where we have large files, but I think that's all going to be one off stuff. Um, but other than that, are there any preferences about like how we share files? Because sometimes we might have to share project files or, or slide decks or any, you know, there's going to be any number of things that we're going to have to share. Any feedback on this one? And we uh, Dropbox is uh, suggested in the text a few times. Well, there seems to be some <laughs> synergy around Dropbox. <laughs> but it's okay. Like to do it. Okay. Yeah, uh, one thing that I'm definitely not a fan of is uh, the Google Drive. It's so not easy to use. Um, like I would use uh, OneDrive over that any day. I know, David. <laughs> All right, uh, code sharing. I, I don't think that's necessarily a big deal right now. Um, we, that's something we can maybe tackle in the future. But most of our code might be like little snippets or whatever, uh, at least in the beginning. 
Um, so in the interest of time, let's uh, move on real quick. Um, the we have more things to go. Uh, so we got chains and goals in. Uh, So like uh, uh, the, the, the Slack channels and all that stuff. Uh, and then within Slack, we can talk about who wants to champion things and, and what our goals are going to be. We can set those over the course of the next month and then discuss them in our next meeting. So with that being said, um, take advantage of these last two minutes. Are there any, uh, any other feedback? Uh, so I'm just going to open up to anything at all that anybody uh, wants to bring up. All right, I got a fun note. We need a new mug. Okay. See the mug there? I the mug? Drink any more coffee because I'd like oh. to have the proper version <laughs> of a mug. So now I have to hold it upside down to use it. So if you would, please, let's get a new mug. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll go ahead and second and third the mug idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not oh, a my... coffee drinker, so more mugs is good. Okay, so I don't. Uh, it sounds like my audio went dropped, or it looks like my audio audio made it dropped. Uh, so I, um, I I don't know how much you heard, but the champions and goals. Uh, we're gonna. I, I suggested that we do that over Slack um, over the course of the next month, uh, in addition to our mission statement, and and so that way um, we can not be too late with this time because I want to respect everybody's timeline. Um, all right, so I got I have things to do. So I was Sean. Uh, so I have some action items uh, to do. Uh, any other feedback that we need to discuss? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, it's just a perfect meeting. Wow, that's amazing. Um, first time ever. Okay, fine. <laughs> well, yeah, you did a great job of organizing things, and that helps. Definitely. Well, that's one of my pet peeves. You walk into a meeting, and people are like, oh, well, let's, uh, I don't, let's get started. And then you get to the end of the meeting, and like the last five minutes was the only productive part. I hate that. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, but I appreciate the feedback, David. Thank you. Well, thank you for being the guinea pig, because now I know how to run the partners meeting. <laughs> 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 well done, well done. All right, so uh, yeah, so with that being said, uh, I'm gonna oh, a meeting a meeting invite. So I'm gonna uh, I have a, a handful of things that I need to do to uh, get us on board for all of our future meetings. Um, and and so uh, be uh, do be looking forward to seeing some uh, invitations to especially Slack. And I also agree to the fewest tools possible. That's part of the reason I like Slack because we can it's possible we can do almost everything in that one place. Um, so yeah, so with that being said, uh, it's one minute over, so I'm gonna let everybody go. Uh, thank you for again for participating, for joining, for your feedback uh, and, and your ongoing feedback and participation in the future. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to growing a community with all of us. Thank you. Thanks. All right. All right. Enjoy the rest of your days. Happy holidays. Take care. You too. All right. Bye. Bye. <clears throat>